we learned a lot from the Switch 8 and thought, um, you know, it's a really good idea, but there were a couple of things that we wanted to tweak on the implementation. We had a proprietary connection on the thing, which was cool. It, it allowed us to do some really neat things with volts and amps that, that we liked. You couldn't use them for anything else, and if you didn't have a cap, you had this switch that was kind of useless. If we went as a universal base with a USB port, then you always would have this USB port. That's there no matter what. We have this huge list of capabilities we can do it because you've got a power source now. Anything that uses power, you could conceptually make a tip that locks into this. Well, there's a lot of things I'd love to do, like laser pointers and you know tasers and stuff like that, but we're not going to go that far. But we'd love to do lots of uh, things that make camping more easy, you know, hiking, uh, perhaps water purification type tips or uh, insect management. You can carry this one battery and, you know, especially, especially if you're backpacking or cycling or something, the weight is an issue there. Um, so you take this one battery, it'll charge your phone, has a little light built in. Um, and then now instead of bringing a whole flashlight or a whole fan or a whole charging thing, whatever the tips are we have, you just bring in the, the part you need and then you can modularly use the same, this part. Our main feature is the built-in flip charger. It's right there. You don't have to worry about bringing cords or forgetting cords to charge it. It's, it's built in and we're pretty happy about that. You know, there's a lot of mechanical engineering that goes into the feel of getting something that can move in two directions. So you got it popping in and out and locking in place. And when it pops out, you also then got to be able to turn it and it moves in relation to the tip. I, I love the feel. I love that it's metal. It's not a cheap plastic lipstick charger. We really paid attention to, to the way it feels when these click open. You know, and that, that seems like a, a silly thing, but when that wasn't there, it just felt cheap and kind of like it was flopping around and it, and it wasn't as nice. This took, took weeks and weeks to get this click to feel just right, like a quality experience. You know, some people think, oh, that's just a click, but when you use it and it doesn't feel good, it kind of lowers your, your experience with it. it. It makes it feel like, ah, oh, it's, it's okay, but it's not great. I pick it up and I'm like, that's, that's just quality. It, it just feels like it's gonna last a long time. You know, it'll charge from your laptop or from your little wall adapter, but obviously we know that one of the charging cases is gonna be from solar. Um, and solar presents some kind of unique uh, challenges. I could plug this into a Nomad and then plug my, my device into this end, into the charging end, and it acts as a buffer. So it's, it's, it's not only powering this, but it's also powering up my phone. So if I go under a tree or a cloud comes over and I'm not getting power from the sun, my phone's still charging because there's still power built up inside the Switch 10. One of the side effects of creating a dynamic input is that now you can plug into a laptop or the wall or your Samsung, your Apple, and each of those it'll kind of adjust and try to charge fastest that is available from that device. Um, the other benefit to that is really what we were going for is for the solar side. Because you are outside and it's hard to control how much power you're actually getting, clouds go by if it's an afternoon versus the middle of the day. There's just a lot of factors that can drop or increase the amount of power available from a given panel. And so you plug this into the panel and you don't want to stress any of the electronics between the solar cells and the battery in here. You want to optimize it. You don't want to waste power by being too low and you don't want to stress it by trying to draw too much. And so you have to create a way to respond to what's going on inside there. And that's really, that's really what the solar ready aspect of, of the product goes. And you know, solar power is it's really precious. You only have so many hours of sun a day and you know, if it's cloudy and, and you want to get every ounce of that power. So we try really hard, you know, with our regulators and our charge circuits and things like that to be as efficient as we can. The fan, you know, when we first did thought of the fan and looked at it, we thought, oh, it's sort of uh, you know, kind of gimmicky maybe. But man, it's it's really useful. It cools you off. Um, people love it. But it has a second use, which has been really convenient. When I go camping and I start a little campfire, rather than put my face right down in that fire and get smoke in my eyes, I just hold that switch fan down in the fire and you got coals in like five minutes. It's, a, it's like a bellows in there. It's really cool. So, you know, one of the lesser known uh, applications for the fan.